What is going on, you guys? I got to bring in the David Silva. What's and up? we also have Ross Persichetti with us. Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? So we got a lot of exciting news for all of you guys. I got to bring up the chat really quick. And really cool things to show off. A lot of, I want to say new stuff, but a lot of stuff we're working on. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We also have, believe it or not, a special guest with us tonight. So let's go ahead and welcome Spino Dude. What's up, America? What's up? How's it going? <laughs> so it's been about a month since we talked to all of you guys. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. So go ahead and let us know what your questions are. We'll start off that way, kind of get a feel for what's going on tonight. And then, like I said, we have a lot of cool stuff to go through. Um, I say a lot of cool stuff. If you guys saw the Instagram post today about the Stegosaurus, we're going to actually have some pictures of that, go over a little bit more with David. But yeah, you guys, it's been an awesome month. Uh, David, do you have any new 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 news? New news? New new. <laughs> do you have any new news you want to share? Um, not not really. I you know I, I've, I've I've been posting a lot on on the social media about new stuff. I mean, as far as what what I've been up to, uh, we do have one new thing to show here, but but maybe we hold off on that for a few minutes. Oh, for sure. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, all the latest stuff I've been posting, um, like as far as progress with Cyberzoic and the Stegosaurus scope finally getting finished. <laughs> it's right behind me here. And I didn't notice it. Yeah. It's right there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's it. He's, he's keeping me company over here. Oh, and, awesome. um, uh, funny note about the Stegosaurus. So I posted it. A while but i mean i post it here and there um and i post like it is big it's it's big it's based on the largest estimate that that i saw and um everyone was like it's too big and now so i'm like well maybe we should bring it back maybe it'd be more realistic if it was a little bit smaller but then everyone was like no it's big enough like just do it don't make it smaller so don't make it smaller. I, i'm undecided on the final size of it i'm still uh, I'm going to have to think about it for a bit, but it's not coming out right away. So I, I think there's going to be time to get more feedback on that, figure it out. But I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it was, it was something that would have been more efficient to hand off to somebody else like Jake or Raul or somebody. Um, but I kind of needed to do this, if that makes sense. Like as far as just staying involved artistically, uh, because the business takes up so much time now uh and um i still want to keep that connection to to the business and i guess as far as participating on a creative level so that piece really means a lot to me and um hopefully everyone enjoys it when it finally comes out oh yeah Bigger. i can't <laughs> wait for the the BITM oh, I, I don't think any of us can everybody in the chat's okay. losing their mind david they're saying make it bigger no <laughs> I, I i think that would be like kaiju level at that point. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make it anything. Like when when do you think it'll be ready? Uh, see that, that that's the thing I have to figure out. I I don't see it coming out any sooner than next year. Um, but there's also a lot of other things in the pipeline as well. I have to figure out. Like for example, our Kentrosaurus is about ninety five percent sculpted. Ooh. So like that could happen sooner. We don't know. Um, that'll be smaller. So it's, you know, less of an investment to, to, to uh, put out. Um, we also have, uh, you know, the, the Pachycephalosaurus that is sculpted. So, you know, we still want to try to put that somewhere. Um, we, we basically uh, overproduced on the models for Cyberzoic one. And before I realized how much I was committing to, so I had to like dial it back and uh some of that stuff has to get shifted around and the, the stegosaurus is one of those things plus it wasn't ready to go anyway because i was taking forever to sculpt it so um but you know a, a lot of this is is chaotic i mean there's a lot of chaos involved with creating these things um like it just kind of put a lot of stuff in motion and then we get to a certain place uh you have to like reassess and like think about what's realistic to move mm -hmm. forward with at that time and then eventually you know things fall into place and um it's it's not a bad thing to have so many pieces ready to go uh but one you know once you start thinking about like 
scheduling like when things hit the market when things have to be tooled when things have to go into production then it starts narrowing down what is actually uh is going to be made and when so this is one of those things like next year at the earliest i would say for stegosaurus uh, and that's that's still really soon considering how you literally just got it done within the last month that's insane yeah like i i, I could send it to the factory tomorrow and have it out by the end of the year but we've invested so much in all these other things already mm -hmm. so like that has to be factored in so that we don't like invest too much up front before we start making some of that back so um so that's that's one of the the the, the considerations that you know kind of keeps us from putting too much out at one time so mm -hmm. And that makes sense because I know we got all this stuff going on and stuff has been shown off with, you know, the more babies. We have one of these questions or one of these statements now, more babies. Yeah, and that's that's super exciting. I know that's something that Ross and Dave were talking about and they got it going, you guys. So get yeah. excited for babies. Yeah, I actually just uh, put the prototypes together for the two babies last night and uh, I'll be painting those soon. I'm, I'm hoping to get those out uh, in time for Christmas this year. So. Nice. Yeah. How the how the prints fit on the bodies? Oh, good. Yeah, they they, they were scaled very well. Um, Sweet. I can grab them. I, I don't know how well yeah. on the camera. Yeah, I grab the Stegosaurus too. I'm not grabbing that. <laughs> actually, um, <laughs> actually, one note I wanted to say on the Stegosaurus because um, this is something I was talking with my friends about that I think is really cool. But the most common color scheme I always see for Stegosaurus is like green with red plates on its back. Yeah, because it just yeah. looks good. But I have to say, like, I love, I don't know if it was intentional, but I love that you basically did the reverse for the BOTM one, where just red body, mint green plates on the back, uh -huh. and it yeah. looks so cool. <laughs> yeah, I I forget what the color inspiration was for that, but it it was, um, l let me check real quick, that's going to bother me if I don't look. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Stegosaurus. And then I, I have a whole sheet here with everything uh let's see it was based on the yucatan spiny tailed lizard uh spiny tailed iguana so hold up chris so, so iguana. that particular species has different color versions and there's there's like sometimes they're gray sometimes they're orangish red and um i just basically took both color versions and made two different designs out of it and um there 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 was uh, part of my thinking was to avoid that cliche design with the green and the and the, and, and the red. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I wasn't consciously trying to reverse it. I was just looking for something different. So it just kind of turned out like that. Was it the spiny yeah. iguana? Uh, yeah, I think I think that was it. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, also, I should also mention that uh, our package art is finished for it already. <laughs> so, so. Oh. Yeah. For yeah. the stego, yeah, 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 right. yeah. Gabriel, you, you gotta, uh, he, he did it. He's, he's working on a lot of stuff right now, like early. Like he, he gets stuff done early because, like, you just have to fit it into a schedule. So sometimes we have to get him the, the, the work early. Yeah, so that's that, that's an example, and that's not quite the colors that we're going for, but, but that, that is one type. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but they have like yeah. the black striping and, and the different colors, so. Jeez, yeah, there's so many cool ones in here, too. I probably picked the most boring one for you guys to look at. Hey, guys, here's a black and white lizard. No. <laughs> yeah, some of them are more red or orange colored, and then there are some that are more neutral. But that's the cool thing about lizards. You, you, you can look up a lot of species of lizards and find, like, depending on where they're at in their growth stage, like, they might have different colors, or sometimes the regional differences depend on the, the, their colors. And... Uh, there's a lot of yeah that's, that's oh that's cool yeah that's pretty different i don't think i was looking at one of those they're so well, like when are we gonna shedding. get a fans choice stegosaurus colored like an oreo just a white stripe down the middle <laughs> <laughs> you never know there you go. <laughs> that's pretty cool Jeez. yeah there's so many cool ones that's neat that's cool Jeez. Yeah. yeah see oh where's the baby you got the babies oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so 
Hey, I don't know how easy it's going to be to see, but this is this is the the, the Chasmosaurus. Put your hand Ooh. behind it when you hold it, and it'll, yeah, there we go. See if that you does that help? Okay, I'm trying to. Yeah, if you make noises and bounce it too, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's so cool. It does look good. Yeah, it looks wow. really good. Yeah, see. Okay, so oh. that's the Cosmo, and then good job, Roz. And then we have the oh, Triceratops. Ah, oh, these are the ones I was waiting for. Those look wow. so good. And that trying to get really good, get it. In. I don't know how good that camera is going to pick up, but it's doing a decent yeah. job, man. That looks great. And yeah, that's I mean, just on the regular body. Yeah, yeah, that's on the uh, on the Dabbleceratops body. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Looks really we just good. did a review on those. If you guys want to see it on our YouTube page or this channel, you guys are watching now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, on the, yeah, on the, on the baby dabble Ceratops there. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about earlier today? It, you know, I, I want to see cyberzoic baby Triceratopses in that bright green. Oh. You know, I, I think that would look really cool. Like, it'd be a fun. Oh, yeah, look. yeah. Like the steel horn babies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I, I, might, I might fit that in somewhere. That might be a cool thing to do. For I'm, a second, when you said Cyberzoic, I thought you were, like, making little guns for him or something. I, that's exactly <laughs> what I just thought. Like, you just, like, just put guns on the baby Triceratops. Yeah. It'd be yeah. so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, see, those things were, it was funny, too, because uh, when you guys brought it, I think it was Ross who told me first. He was like, yeah, I, I talked to David about doing these baby things. And I was like, no way, because I had never opened up the baby Diablo Ceratops. And that, dude, they're so fun. It's crazy how much posability and articulation you got into those little figures. Those are cool. I actually have a funny sto mini story about the Diablo, because I wasn't planning on getting the babies. I was going to wait for the trikes. And one of my friends was like, I'll give you one. I don't want all three. And I got the whole pack. I'm like, cool, I'll take one. And then another friend was like, I only want one. I'll send you two. So I ended up with the whole set. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that works out. Yeah. I'm like, I'll take it. That's fine. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man. Yeah, now you guys got me losing all these. We got, wait, there's three Davids. Who's the third David? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna call you David. There's a no. secret David somewhere. There's someone who says behind you is the Stegosaurus. His name's David. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Go. That no, could that... be the canon name for the Stegosaurus. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got. I want to show him this. Are you ready to show off the? Uh, I guess we kind of already. No, we didn't show this artwork off yet, have we, David? Uh, Whose artwork? The uh, what's this guy called? Not the Allosaurus. The uh, the what was it? the one that you just sent me. Oh, that's that's the the uh, the the sculpt. Yes. You want to show it now? Oh, I do. Where we're talking about all these new okay. things. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus. Acro. 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 Yeah, you better get it right. That's Dave's favorite. Yeah, you, you need me to type it out for you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in chat for you. Oh, look how freaking cool this thing oh, is! Oh, there he is. Oh. So who sculpted this one, Dave? That that's Jake. Jake Bartley again, and he did the yeah. T Rexes. Yeah, and and we we were like going back and forth trying to do something you know a, a little more unique as far as the, the overall look and design, and and he was going back and looking at the sculpts that I did for my model kits because I I did two acros for my model kits, and and that's why we added those those little spines along the back like the little ridges, and because um, that that was something that I like to do on mine. But we made made them smaller, so that and it's a little more realistic that way, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm super happy with it, and it's one of those things that we've just been kind of sitting on for like a year now because we have so many other things going on. So, um, so this is going to be one of our our big headliners for Cyberzoic too. Yeah, dude. I love the. Uh... The scales are very lizard-like on the back, and if I remember correctly, you said on you confirmed what the colors were going to be on Instagram a while ago by a comment, right? Yeah, yeah. the The, the colors I want to do are actually based on the original model buildup that I did, which were from the marine iguana. Yeah. So they're like a lot of like darker kind of black colors with some reds and some oranges and just a hint of blue, and then like kind of like a grayish face you know like i haven't done That's a design nice for it yet but yeah yeah something like that not not quite that much blue probably but but yeah something like that yeah that's so cool i'll never say no to blue if it sneaks its way on 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's cool to have like little hints of blue on things, uh, especially with something like this. Like it just kind of pops the other colors so much, especially if like you have oranges in there. Yeah, that's... yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, something like that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of lizards with these colors. I, I think it's really interesting. They All right, still... Chris, now get started sculpting the Cyberzo armor for this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because the armor turns into a robot stegosaurus for some reason. But... Oh, we have that on the website, don't we? Yeah, um, yeah, we, yeah, we have we have the design up there. Ross did the design. I'm gonna have and, to go look uh, for this. I, I forget what we called. Cinderblade. 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 Yeah, yeah, because it, it's a fire-breathing stegosaurus robot that turns into armor for an acrocanthosaurus, which is that whole sentence is ridiculous. But... <laughs> Somehow we're going to make it seem realistic. <laughs> now, is the regular Stegosaurus going to breathe fire also in the canon? <laughs> no, no. Wait, no, why not? That's, no. That, that's, that's not possible. But this is, this is possible, though. Oh, yeah. Um, I would actually like to bring attention to a comment I just saw go by. But um, I know you did like a 135th version for the T-Rex and the Triceratops before. Are you considering doing that for the other large theropods, like the Acro? Yeah, so, yeah. I. I definitely do want to get back to the 135th scale. Uh, it's it's something that I think, especially for the larger figures, you know, it's it's good because people can have those species in their collection without taking up a huge amount of space and costing a lot of money. So it is something that I, I, do, I do want to figure out where to put that in, uh, but I, I don't I don't know how it fits in yet. Just like a lot of things, but but yeah, I do want to do it though. I I think it's important to get back to that. Yeah, that would be really cool because I know, especially it, it, I remember you were talking. You want to start doing more sauropods and stuff, and I think that's oh yeah, going to be a must for that. Right? Yeah, well, that's that that was the whole reason I started doing the one thirty fifth scale was because I want to eventually get to the sauropods and do like these huge hundred foot long species. You know, like you can't like at one one eighteen scale. I know there's gonna be somebody who tells me they'll buy it, but you know, at, at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right uh, here. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like you know, I mean, you, you see how big the Jurassic World ones are, and like, like if I put something like that out at that size with all the articulation and the paint apps and everything, I mean, it's gonna like triple the price probably. So it's not very feasible for a lot of people. But one thirty four works well. I know I've said like I would buy just like one one eighteenth scale Argentina source or something, just like the biggest one possible. Yeah, it's a centerpiece. But yeah, well, well, <laughs> Chris and I have, have talked about doing something like that, like like the, the logistics of how that would work. But in the biggest issue, um, isn't necessarily like funding it; it's storing it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. because it'll be like it'll be a big box and they're not going to move that fast because they'll be expensive and you know you end up paying a lot for storage fees at that point because it's such, it's such a big thing and the demand's going to be lower because it's probably going to be like 300 plus dollars for something that size um mm -hmm. and a lot of people aren't going to be able to, to do that or have the space for it for that matter so um as cool as that would be you know, unless I have like distribution, like sideshow or something like that, it's it's going to be really hard to pull off. So, yeah. um, you know, may, maybe, you know, if things keep going in the right direction and we get to the point where we can do something like that and we have more distribution and more warehouse space and things like that, it might be possible. <laughs> well, see, and that's, that's the crazy thing to me because once <laughs> I actually started to think about it, because I was thinking too, we get we get the funding for it we do it but then it's the storage you would have to have a whole warehouse for a thousand of those things it's insane well yeah, yeah maybe not a whole warehouse but it does take up a lot of space oh, yeah. i i i experienced the effects of taking up a lot of space with something with the t-rex and that like that was automatically the biggest thing that I, I had made and um and and some of them move real fast but then we had like the gray ones don't move that fast so we have to store those and there's still a lot of them left so you know so it, it's it's really a gamble with the bigger figures like if they sell well then it's not a big deal but when when they're sitting around for a while then it becomes kind of an issue if you have a bunch like that so 
like right now we just have the one that's sitting around like the one skew that's sitting around it's not really moving that fast but um luckily all the other ones are doing fine it's just um like when you have something that big it's it's a bit more risky as to compared to like doing a smaller type of thing like if it's yeah. like we're storing like the one six scale raptors the 135th scale t-rex or something it's not that big of a deal yeah i assume uh, also like shipping those overseas from the factories and stuff is also uh, a task in itself <laughs> well well the, the only places that i ship to from the factory are china hong kong and taiwan everywhere else is too expensive to ship to surprisingly even though they're like closer proximity like like say singapore philippines or something like that taiwan um for some reason it's still cheaper to ship from the u.s so so that's what we do <laughs> yeah but yeah we just i mean it, it's always a process of figuring out what works best and and uh you know we're always figuring out ways to improve uh we actually just expanded our our warehouse distribution so so we have our stock in two warehouses now we have it in new jersey but we also have stock now in Utah. So oh. uh, we now we can get stuff to people faster on the West Coast, and which is really nice now. Uh, so and it also saves us money because of the shipping costs go down at that point. So so yeah, so like that, to, that, that was kind of a big step to like expand into two different warehouses on, yeah. on each coast. So so that's pretty cool. I'd That's like to awesome. imagine that the warehouse in Utah only has Utah Raptor and Utah Ceratops. <laughs> Specifically. I'm going to yeah. have to keep a lot of stock for those over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, do we have any information on the uh, Centrosaurus? Ceratosaurus. The Ceratosaurus? Oh, <laughs> Centrosaurus is already out, Chris. <laughs> which one's the Triceratops Centrosaurus? <laughs> They were asking yeah. the Ceratosaurus. The Ceratosaurus. <laughs> Why do they all sound the same? They don't because really you have to stop and read them. <laughs> <laughs> I see the first letter and the sword. I'm like, C sword, got he, it. He fills in the middle by, you know. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm going to see myself out, you guys. <laughs> the the, uh, the, oh. cent the uh, uh, Ceratosaurus, you see, you got me saying it. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the Ceratosaurus uh, is uh it's still coming and it will probably end up being part of cyberzoic too i think uh we we have um raul ramos has a sculpt started for it and uh um that one we we'll probably won't we probably won't get to that this year i'm thinking because we have too many things in front of it but it, it's definitely going to happen yeah yeah chris's pronunciation yeah he actually is, is redefining a lot of things so, <laughs> and, uh, for the best. Oh, yeah, God. it's it's fun. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, My favorite is still Dino Tacus. <laughs> Wait for over oh, Dinonicus? Dino Tacus. I know. Oh man. And what was funny too is in my head they sound right, and I'm so confident saying them. And as soon as I say them, it's either Dave or Ross are just like, huh? Like, oh, <laughs> It did take a while to get over the uh, Triceratopsian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That never happened. No. <laughs> I, what's funny, too, is I'll still do that. It's horrible. See, oh, all, what did all you the say ones the, that one hurt in the, the last video, you. Chris, you said, like, check out these Ceratopsian saurus or something. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Dude, you guys have so for all of you who don't know, Spinal Dude's been editing the last few videos and doing an amazing job. So he gets to see all the stupid, weird things I do behind the scenes. And I'm pretty sure people <laughs> thought I'd be in a sane asylum. Oh yeah, there's like an hour of just like unpublishable <laughs> footage of Chris just like <laughs> I'm seriously, we gotta make a montage of all that crap. Oh my god. I mean April oh, is there's coming there's up, a challenge so. in there for you from uh from, oh, wait. from George. We're going, hold on. George, I don't even see this one. Archipetus Horexis. Okay, that's perfect. Archipertix. Artipertix. Partipertix. How do you say that? Archipteryx. Got it. Luckily, it'll be a while before we get to that Ooh. one. So. Yeah. <laughs> it will it only be like this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah 118 scale. Yeah, we're going to have to put that at 16 scale. I think. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. That actually cool. is a great lead in. That was one question I had for you, David, for today. Um, I was thinking, um, would you ever consider doing like 118 scale, like Archaeopteryx, Microraptor, like tiny little things that are just like static figures as accessories that maybe come with like other dinos or something from the I, same formation? I have thought about that. I mean, that it's, it's definitely something that would be pretty easy to do i think as far as like like costs go i mean at that scale you wouldn't really have to have much paint on it obviously and it's you know it's a, it's a low molding cost you could probably include it with other larger parts so i, I think it's very possible that we'll see something like that in the future but i think it'll be awesome it's yeah, actually like, cool. you have some comps and they think you know, now i'm telling like chris that comp, <laughs> comp, the copies you know comps like comps <laughs> Well, the, well the, the only drawback is that no matter how small or how big the sculpt ends up being output, the sculpting work costs the same amount of money. So, so like the like for for example, the the T Rex sculpt is going to cost me the same as an Archaeopteryx sculpt, even though the Archaeopteryx might be an inch long and the T Rex might be twenty seven inches long. So that the, oh, that that's a consideration. Uh, you know, like it's like each sculpt has to be you know, you know, it has to be worked into the budget somewhere. So, uh, so it'd be, it would be a little harder to recoup that, that portion of the expense, but at the same time, you know, if it helps sell something else, then, you know, then it's worth doing. So I just have to figure out, you know, how to best utilize that idea, but I, I, I do want to do it. I want to figure out how to do that. See, that's, that would that's be awesome. Well, that's what blows my mind is how much the tooling is. That's crazy because you don't think about these things. Like as a consumer, you know, we buy these things where we think they're awesome, but you don't realize how much goes into actually getting the figure to us and all the hurdles and then the cost of everything. I think that's the crazy yeah. thing. And that's about okay. I mean, yeah. that's like to, to me, I, I find all that very interesting. Like I'm like ever since I've been doing the, this, this side of the business, I've become more interested in finding out about all the other businesses that came before, like, like what was going on with Mattel and Hasbro when I was a kid, you know, like, why did they put this out and not this? And why did this not come out? And, you know, like just learning more about uh, the business is it's becoming as interesting to me as learning more about the stories of the mm -hmm. characters and, and the worlds. So, you know, like having interest in all of it, I think helps me with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's so, yeah, I don't even think about that. It's crazy. So are you enjoying the business side as much as you do the artistic side of it? Not as much, <laughs> yeah. but, but, um, I, I do find it interesting. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind handing a lot of it off, but I'm not at that stage yet. So, uh, so yeah, I, I eventually do want to get to a point where I'm more involved with the creative part and the creative process, because when we started off doing this, I was doing all of that. And mm -hmm. now, you know, if we're going to grow, I have to delegate a lot of that to other people, uh, preferably people that can do it better than me. Yes. And, and, um, I, I think that's been working pretty well so far, but I, I never want to leave the creative part of the business, even if, even if it's inefficient, like the Stegosaurus, it was inefficient for me to, to take that on, but I kind of needed it for uh, just the, for the sake of not being burnt out and just having an involvement on the creative side instead of just like abandoning it altogether. So mm -hmm. I always want to be sculpting something. And after this, I told you, Chris, I'm sculpting a dragon after this. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, that'll be cool. Cause the last time I sculpted a dragon was that Arctic dragon model kit, and that wasn't even articulated. So how long how long ago was that that you did that kit? I want to say 2015. Wow, so it's been a decade. Whoa, I, I could be wrong, but I yeah. think it was around that time. Yeah, I and mean, I wasn't even thinking about making my own action figures back then. I I felt like like all I could do was do model kits. So mm -hmm. um, so that's why I was pushing. That's great. So how did you, so that's a question for me or to you is how did you get into doing the actual action figures with the Raptors? What pushed you to make them action figures instead of doing model kits? Um, well, I, I, I kind of played around with the idea of having them be action figures uh, early on. I mean, a lot of like very few people probably remember this, but there was, there were a line of 
model kits that were posable and they were kind of stylized. They were, they were, uh, I, I did a Velociraptor and I did an Oviraptor and I put them out in a bunch of different colors and they were just resin castings. They weren't like mass produced or anything. And, um, they were meant to be like, you, you would just, they were simple ball joints. You plug it into each other and, um, they they worked to some degree but because each casting was slightly different you, like a lot of times you had to kind of finagle it a bit and adjust it but um that was the beginning of me exploring this idea of articulated dinosaurs and then there were some potential opportunities that were coming up within the the toy companies i was working with but they kept getting shot down at some stage and that's when i just decided well why don't i just try to do it myself uh, because that's around the time the Kickstarter uh, uh, action figures were starting to become a thing, like with Four Horsemen and Boss Fight Studio. And um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I just went at it with, you know, the best thing I could think of. And, uh, you know, that's where everything started with the Raptor series. So, um... <laughs> that's which crazy. one is that? No, sorry, I just saw someone mention my mascot in chat, Dang's fish, so I had to flash him up. Oh, that's cool. So you... <laughs> someone uh, 3D printed him custom for me. It's a little you... Dunkley Osteus with a cowboy that's hat. That's super on. cool. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. Is, is, yeah. is that something that you designed? Uh, yep. So uh, it was a character that just kind of became like a channel meme. And um, I had a t-shirt design made for this for one, like a month that went around. And then a friend of mine 3D printed this for me and sent that's, it over. That's so. really cool. <laughs> I want to do a Dunkley Osteus at some point. I think that'd be really neat. Yeah. That's another thing I was actually going to ask is like thoughts on marine reptiles and pterosaurs. I know like pterosaurs engineering wise, if you want to have them like perched and flying, I don't yeah. know if you had any ideas for like the wings on that, but marine reptiles seem like they could be pretty doable with a stand. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's all doable. The, the, the uh, pterosaurs have come up here before, and I the the idea that I have in mind right now is that like to have articulated wings, but also have an option for uh, interchangeable folded up wings for like walking poses. Because there's there's a point where the articulated wings don't look right when it's in a walking pose. I mean, you, it, it's kind of okay in a lot of cases, but if you really want to get like all the wrinkles and like folds and everything like you can have like the swappable folded up arms, I think would, would, would look nicer. Uh, yeah. But uh, that's, that's where I'm at with it right now. when I'm thinking about it. So um, I, I think it's a little ways off because we have so many other things in front of that, but uh, there's really an endless number of, uh, of ideas right now or at any time, really. Um, yeah. I didn't answer that last question. Oh. Let I me go back to it. That, yeah. It yeah, was I was curious about the answer to that one. Too. I was too. Yeah. Hold yeah, on. Me it as was well. Dave, yeah, I, I kept needing to answer, but we were talking about all the other things. So, <laughs> Dave, give me one sec. It was basically said, Dave, what's your favorite figure you've made? Oh, so that's the Otachi, I think. I mean, as far as like like for other companies, <laughs> yeah. the Otachi. Um, I'm so jealous, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one is you can still get on Amazon. NECA is selling them for a little bit more than they originally went for on Amazon. You can still get it. Mm -hmm. um, really? Yeah. 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 Um, I might just buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you should leave your credit card information on the screen. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, I got you. This, <laughs> this question has me curious now. Like, what are all of your guys' favorite BOTM dinosaurs? Like, mine? For Dave, like, it could be one you sculpted or like, you know. Oh, like you know, one that's been produced in general, or and like I'm curious about what all your guys' opinions are. Are okay. you talking like all of us four, three? Yeah. yeah. What What is their favorite <laughs> piece of the Mesozoic dinosaur? That, I haven't really thought about that in a long time. It is on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. I know what my favorite is. Yeah. Every time you make a video, you have a new favorite. <laughs> Six. That's like, me too. <laughs> Every time I send a video to David when he sends me something to review, I'm like, I think this might be my new favorite. <laughs> I'm looking um, around and trying to figure out what mine is. I think well, it's definitely a Ceratopsian. 
Just because the triceratops hand. Hand. Oh. Triceratops <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the problem. So uh, you don't realize how cool they are. Even these dinosaurs I haven't heard about, every time I open a box, I'm always blown away. And it's a, it's kind of frustrating because uh, my favorite ones I'll put in the center of the, like, shelves. And then I always have to, like, scoot them out. Every time I open a new one, I push them out a little bit more. Mm. Nice. Oh, the Taurosaurus? Yeah. 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 yeah I like that one is just a such a statement piece. Like, um, you wouldn't think of just making something this bright blue that's this big. <laughs> Yeah. And I just love it. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone so cool. is a Power Rangers fan, displaying the Blue Ranger next to the Taurosaurus looks awesome. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's, a, it's a blue Triceratops. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. same with the T-Rex and then the uh, the uh, uh, Sabertooth Tiger. Yeah, I was to say. exclusive is going to be perfect for the you know Yellow Ranger. So Russ, now we see th- a green <laughs> dragon and a, a big old Mastodon. Dave, <laughs> yes. okay. Ross, where's your Power Rangers? Are they with your dinosaurs? They're uh, they were, but now they're in like a cool like oh nice little, little stage. Uh, you, yeah. Well, oh, and I guess a pink pterodactyl, pink or red, you know. But, uh, That'd be sweet. By the way, finished out the 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 beast of Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Acrocanthosaurus. Is anybody designing the ath- or not designing sculpting the Acrocanthosaurus armor yet? There, there is no Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus. We have one of those. There companies. is. Yeah. <laughs> there is that one. Yeah. I'm gonna get a Google sheet that just has all the names pronounced really, really easily, like child, the children. I'm gonna Wait, have a children can, book. Can we get like a new plugin here to where I type oh. in the name and it just has like a robot like voice reading over whenever Chris says it? <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it really means. Be, like it was funny because we we're doing the uh the new thing we're doing for every Monday, we're gonna be releasing a short of a dinosaur. And it was funny because Spinal Dude had the name pronunciated pronunciation down there with these hyphens between or whatever, <laughs> so I could see it so easily. I didn't even notice it. I read the whole thing like 20 <laughs> times, and on camera you hear me go, Mother effort. I go, yeah. it's right here. <laughs> Oh. I literally told you like twice. I'm like, I have a pronunciation guide for you right at the bottom. Oh, Chris. You got to ask Ross about how bad I am about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, my goodness. I don't remember what happened or what I said. Okay. I don't remember exactly what it was. All right. Listen to this. Chris sent me something. It was a drawing. And I was like, I forget what he was asking me about. He was asking for some help or something. I gave him a tip. All right. And then I sent a voice message with this. So I drew it out. I wrote on it. And it's labeled because I found a drawing off the internet that showed what I was trying to communicate. And I wrote, this is not my drawing. I sent that, <laughs> along with a voice message, sent, in which inside me explaining everything said, this, it wasn't my drawing. I just took it off the internet. And his first response was, how did you draw that so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Words are hard, you guys. I don't know. I mean, English is the hardest language, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's hard to know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Dave, what's your favorite dinosaur? Big Dave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, the the yeah. You know, I I've been thinking about it this whole time. Um, it's really hard to say. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I I guess if if I if I was forced to pick one, I'd probably say the Gorgosaurus. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Wait, why the Gorgosaurus? That's everybody's favorite. No, is it? I mean, nobody here said that was a favorite. Who likes it? Your favorite? I, I, no, I your, your, your new favorite is the Diabloceratops. <laughs> you said so. Listen, we're about to do the Packy Rhino, so it's going to be a favorite <laughs> too. Your favorites. Yeah, yeah. Next week's your new. No, favorite. no. We yeah. just did the short on the Gorgosaur, so it's his current mm-hmm. favorite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go. Oh. Listen, I'm gonna have to get my own channel where I don't get roasted here. What is this? No. <laughs> Chris's corner. I start like steaming. No. Oh man, hit this very top. Sorry, now I'm reading all these. Yeah. Perm- oh, I <laughs> I posted this. I was like, oh, someone said it. <laughs> like, while we're on the topic of Chris pronunciation, I'm gonna put it in chat. But Chris, can oh, you kind of man. pronounce this dinosaur name quick? I'm Let's just see. curious. <laughs> we got uh, we got a few more questions in here. Oh, what is this? What is a Giga? Who is this? Do we have? We don't have one of these. A Giga? Oh, oh, a giant raptor. Giganta raptor. Giganta raptor. Yeah. No, we don't have one of those. Uh, mm. And I haven't really researched it. 
So how many raptors are there? I feel like I learned I, there's I a new one in every stream. That, oh. that that was not a dromaeosaur. I'm pretty sure that's Gigantoraptor that, is a huge oviraptor. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one. Okay, yeah, I I have seen. I, it's a very big thing. Yeah, that that one. We're gonna do oviraptor okay. first. Yeah, and then maybe the Gigantoraptor. But there, there, there there's a lot of non dromaeosaurs with raptor in the name. It gets very uh, confusing sometimes. I guess All the names are very mega raptor, cool. raptor, mega raptor, Gigantor raptor. <laughs> um, it's got to be other. Hi, Harib. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Spino dude, did you figure out what your favorite was? What oh, was um, yeah, the, I think the Taurosaurus. If I had to pick one, oh, okay. but um, gotcha. I think for just like for the whole experience of just like articulating and posing and stuff. I gotta hand it to it's like a tie between the Chiansosaurus and the Electrosaurus because that mm. whole kit with the the stand and the pegged feet and just that body size with the range of motion on everything is so much fun. I have so much fun with both of those all the time. Um, I actually hope we get more theropods with that those body parts because I will get them. <laughs> uh, we we'll, we'll we'll do an Ali Ram Ali Ramos. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we actually have some armor designs for that. It's going to be part of the Desert Clan. So, oh, sweet. Yeah, so that is a thing. I've already talked to Jake about that one, um, but I do want to use that body again if I can. I think it it works really well. So, is that the like it's awesome. the meeting dinosaur guy? Yeah, it's it's actually very similar to the Electrosaurus. It's, okay, yeah, I'm trying to find a good picture of him. Yeah. There's so many pictures without lips for Ross, but I don't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Man. It'd be cool to, it'd be cool too, maybe as a little hint, hint, wink, wink, maybe get a green Tyrannosaur too, because I don't think we have any green ones, dude. No, the, the Alberto, I'm Whoa. an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> the, the Cyberzoic one was planned to be green, right? It was, it was an idea. I mean, that, that was in part of... The concept art but i haven't settled on a color scheme for that one yet there's yeah. so many cool dinos that's pretty cool illustrated I, I like those colors that's pretty i cool. know i saw the yeah, blue one that's like him. that's how you yeah. get him i think that's fred uh fred weirham's art right there okay yeah that's, really that's cool nice job. i like that that's so cool yeah I'm, I'm kind of a sucker when they have like some sort of blue hint of, you know like like a like a hint of blue somewhere especially like on the snout or something Heck yeah. Well, you know what got me was when I saw the Dilophosaurus with the blue in his mouth. That was yes. impressive because yeah. I'm so used to basic dinosaur colors, you know, the browns, the greens, and stuff like that. And then when I saw that, I was like, you can do well, this. It, it, <laughs> it's based on, uh, I think it, it, I think it's based on a, a bird. Yeah, it, it's based on, I forget the name of the bird, the double crested, uh, I forget the name of it. Um, anyway. The one that looks like a dinosaur. Yeah, well. It has That's a, like all the birds. It has a mouth. <laughs> the inside of his mouth is blue. Oh, cormorant. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the. That's, that's, How do you spell that? C O R M O R A N T. Oh, yep. Nice. Yeah, so that has a blue mouth, but after seeing the prototype, it actually kind of reminds me of uh, Otachi a bit because it has like mm. the double frill and the, the blue mouth and everything. So it, it feels like it's all connected somehow. Even so, the um, cyberzoic acid effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the officers, especially, you want to kind of try to avoid that stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, Park, that, right? <laughs> yeah. That 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 is a good point. I don't really Wait, want. To they don't spit the acid, board. and they don't no. have really? <laughs> Come right. on, Chris. <laughs> Chris has to leave now. <laughs> Get him out of here. see you guys. <laughs> 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 oh man by the way i found this bird looks pretty cool yeah some it's some cool feathers there <laughs> and, uh, my, my friend eric in the chat actually has an interesting fact i didn't know he said did you know cormorants don't have nostrils they all breathe through their mouth what that's wild <laughs> mouth breathers, that's, wild. Huh? that's yeah. why they leave their mouth open mm. i wonder if that's why their their mouth is blue on the inside it's like all that oxygen <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> Wait, why is this so big? Hold on. Now I gotta like something big. Chris would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but me too much, Dave. <laughs> I found this cool picture, but it's not pulling it up. 
Well, hey, Ross didn't tell us his favorite BO. Yeah, song. Ross. Oh, um, I guess it's it's uh it's between two um uh, uh ceratopsians. It's either the Pachyrhinosaurus or the uh it's the Xenoceratops, right? That's the same body. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 yeah the yellow. Between, between yeah. those two, um, just the 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 size, the sculpt, the mm -hmm. level articulation, like uh, the paint, both of those are kind of like at the top, which yeah, is surprising I, because I'd expect the carnivore to be in my top top uh, list. But yeah, I I really like that Pachyrhinosaurus too. I actually prefer the original colors more. So oh, I, 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 I'm, I like the fans' choice more. That's oh, the one dude. I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, do to, too. To be They're perfectly really honest, good, I, I kind of struggled with uh, turning that, like that, uh, walking with dinosaurs design into a BOTM figure, and and I, I was, I didn't feel like there was a lot to work with there, so I went up to you, Chris. I, I almost kind of reinvented it. <laughs> Well, it's you know what's crazy is now that we're talking about these color schemes, Dave. I've noticed there's blue on a lot of these guys, and it's and now it's gonna be my little hunt in all these little videos. Where's the blue? Yeah, blue. Like, it's the lack of oxygen. Yeah. Okay. Also, <laughs> that's it. Does everybody also, have an open one? <laughs> yep. Yes, Dave, sir. where's yours? Uh, <laughs> it, it's 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 hard to get to. I'm, oh, I don't man. have one readily available. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this is a great idea. An art book with everything in it. Oh yeah, actually, be cool. I really do want to do that. That's that's on the uh, figure out list. <laughs> um, yeah, right now all the book resources are being taken up by the comic book uh, stuff. But but yeah, I I think we 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 have a lot of artwork we could use and so much. When when we do put a book out, I I want to be able to like have write ups and you know, explanations and processes and things like that. I, I don't want it to just be a bunch of images. Like, you know, I want it to be something more interesting. So once we, you know, have space for that, we'll, 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 we'll definitely get to that. So. See, that's, that's what I'm excited for. Cause I know we talked about that, but I think that's the coolest idea. Cause like, I'm a huge fan of monster hunter and so is a uh, spinal dude. And so those, those art books are so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have at least one of those art books, maybe two. Right. I can't remember. Just don't show Ross if you try to do any drawings from him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, speaking of which, hey, we have hey, a when, When's Creative Beast getting the, the Monster Hunter license? <laughs> that, that's not for me. I, I I think Bandai's doing a very good job with it. So. Oh, yeah, with the, the if, set page? The, the only... The only interest I have in licenses is if nobody else is handling it well or doing it at all. So, um, like, there's very few things that I would even be somewhat interested in. And I think the top of the list right now is Primal Rage. Because I just feel like that's a good fit for us if we were to do something and nobody's touching it for some reason. I'm kind of surprised. I'm but, so surprised. I want to actually see how hard it would be to get something like that. By the I, way. I, you know, I, I I bet within a few months someone's gonna announce that they have it. <laughs> you really think us? No, not us. No, <laughs> no, I'm not talking about. No, we're years away from doing something like that. So I mean, there's a good chance someone else will pick it up before that. But I'm just saying, like, just you know, just just talking, like that would be of the most interest to me if I were to pick something right now. Oh yeah. I love Primal Rage. We got Ross turned on to that when we went to PowerCon and he didn't realize how cool. Here, here it is, the Robotech question. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> I got um, we keep forgetting to answer the Robotech question. My thoughts on Robotech are minimal because I don't have any Robotech toys. Uh, my only Robotech experience is that when I was a kid, I have one Robotech toy and it was a miniature version of the giant robot that turned into some sort of aircraft carrier. Um, I, I don't even know what he's called, but I saw the toy later on in life and on eBay or something. I was like, oh, I remember having that. It was really cool. Um, and then later on, a friend gifted me a couple of Robotech figures that were pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that, that I mean, I, I think it, there's a lot of cool stuff. 
uh, with Robotech. I've seen a lot of cool artwork. They have a lot of cool toys. Um, the cartoon looks cool. It's just, it, I just didn't get into it. I just missed it for some reason because I was, I was doing the He-Man and the Transformers and the Ninja Turtles and the mask and whatever else there was. So, you know, something got left behind. All the cool I, stuff. Speaking of Transformers and Ninja Turtles, did you see that crossover that just got revealed today? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm, I, I'm, I'm on the fence about getting it just because I'm trying not to buy too many Transformers these days. Yeah, and but, I think it's like fifty bucks, which is, you know, I guess the, all, I think it's all the crossovers are a little steeply priced, but uh, yeah, yeah, they probably like them, but they have well. It's not double license. There was just one license to that, so because they own Transformers, so yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm at the point now where I'm really trying to cherry pick. I say that, but I have like twelve GI Joes over there I haven't opened yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm I'm trying to be better about what I what I'm getting as far as the the newer toys. Um, because there's just so much. I mean, there, there's a lot of good stuff. If you buy everything that's good now, how would you even have space for it? You know, so you get uh, it's me, me with BOTM. Look at my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah. we just... I mean, I I don't even have a lot of shelf space for my own stuff. Like as far as the BOTM, like I only have like maybe a third of the collection out on display. And oh like, yeah, yeah. So like. Because I have so many other collections, I have you know the He-Man's and the Transformers, and I I I, I uh, whittled down my superhero collection quite a bit recently. Like like I think I got rid of like three quarters of it, and like the Marvel Legends and the DC oh, stuff, yeah. uh, just because I wanted more of other stuff instead. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to be a little more cautious about the new stuff that I'm getting because there's so much, it's just, it's, it's a bit overwhelming actually. I mean, it's cool that there's so much good stuff to choose from, but at the same time, like it's not reasonable to think you can appreciate that much content all at once. I mean, mm -hmm. you really have yeah. to stop and think for a minute, like, oh, how is this going to look a year from now or two years from now? Am I, am I going to want to sell this next year? And if that's oh, the yeah. case, like, don't buy it, you know? It, is this something that I'm going to feel like I should have bought a year from now? I'm going to feel bad about it. If the answer is yes, then I'll get it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm not too worried about if it appreciates in value. I just like, I want inspiring, cool looking things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, we're kind of spoiled right now. We're like, super spoiled. You know, like, our adult collectors, like we have, such a huge variety of things you know to choose from it's it's pretty insane uh so it, it's easy to like do the impulse purchase thing and just like overbuy. and then if you buy too many things at once how are you appreciating any of it exactly so i i try to be very uh, uh conscious of that especially you know being a collector now since uh i think i started like back in 1999 this is one of my current collections started so you know 25 years in and there was a time when i would buy every single transformer or every single i don't know star wars or whatever mcfarland toy all, all that stuff like you know, the, the new thing comes out you got to get it got to get it and as i keep going i realize like how much of that is unnecessary because there's a lot of that that i had to sell off there's a lot of it I had to give away and they're only left with certain portion of it and now i'm just trying to like think of in my head like what portion is that special and that's the stuff that i'm trying to buy now so it's it, it's it's like it's like a whole nother discipline like the the toy collecting you know it really is isn't it yeah because that's that's my biggest problem right now because i went for so long without collecting things that i meet you guys and started buying yeah, well, you're, you, you're kind of in your toy collecting infancy right now so you're oh probably buying way too much stuff <laughs> man but it's that's so cool yeah yeah my worst thing right now is the beast of mesozoic line i have so many of them i know i know <laughs> but, yeah. 
Yeah, you're not paying for a lot of them. Just either. multiplying <laughs> like cockroaches all over the place. And, you know? <laughs> but that's that's so true. That's I just started running into that, and so I built five new shelves in my office garage <laughs> studio so I could have space. And now I'm looking at because I want to get all the Monster Hunter stuff, little the yeah. miniature figures. But yeah. speaking of all yeah. this, you know what we should do? What's that? Oh, new acquisitions. New acquisitions. Yeah. I need yeah. to write a little jingle for that or something. <laughs> <laughs> we might have a little jingle. Hold on, let's see. Sing it for us, Chris. <laughs> He's gonna sing. Do you it. believe it? <laughs> when my oh, guitar wait. is right there. <laughs> Can we hear that? Yeah, hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we seriously got to get some jingle. Dave, we got to get jangle, jingle, jangles, jangles. I don't know what you're saying. Jingle jams. <laughs> Jeez, I missed 45 comments while we were talking about that. Okay, here, let me move this banner so you guys can see us again. And we'll get this going. Cool. Um, so who wants to go first? Oh, you know what? We got a new guy, Spino Dude. You got to go first. Yeah. Oh, you want me to go first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have so many things I've gotten in the past month, but I have selected a couple things, two of which I actually just got today in the mail. Um, oh. But there's this new company of dinosaur miniatures called How Long Good that has come out. And I got I've these. I've seen these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. There's a picture of them. That's the thumbnail for the video coming up soon. Um, but uh, they're all in 135th scale, I believe. And um, they're just really detailed, really nicely painted. And they're only like about 15 bucks a piece. Um, so they sort of filled that niche in my collection of kind of like tiny museum statues, like miniatures that, that I like really cool, yeah. putting next to each other. And um, I originally wasn't going to get the Chasmosaurus. I'm a simp for pachyrhinosaurus so i just get all of those i love pachyrhinosaurus but um i wasn't going to get the chasmo but then i realized oh the botm one i have is chasmosaurus belli and this one's chasmosaurus russell eye with the brown mm -hmm. horns and then i got to thinking that'd be cool if david silva did a chasmosaurus russell eye with the extra horns I, on think that'd be, <laughs> um, I, I think that'd be really cool too because then i can use that body again <laughs> yeah there you go yeah and then um the other thing I chose to show off is because I, I have the Spino Wait, you chose dude. more than one? Yeah, I did. All right. This is a Wonder Whoa. Artistic Models Spinosaurus model kit that I built recently that I think is really cool. Chris, you got to come up this year. <laughs> well, see, this is – look at this thing. That's I want to get one of these now. Whoa. Yep. So it's all built out of wood. You punch them out of these trays, and they just snap together. Some of the parts are a little loose. Um depending on what you get, so you have to glue them. But it's got a counterbalance with a string on the back to actually keep it, like, nice. fully that looks, balanced. That looks more sturdy than my Zoids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's really cool. I have a few cool. kits from them. Um, they have, like, some starter kits on their website, too, of just, like, little skulls you can put together to get used to putting them together. That's really cool. There's so much cool yeah. stuff. It's crazy. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny too because he had that on his shelf when I was talking to him one day. I was like, "What is that up there?" And he's like, "I will tell you about it." <laughs> Let's see. All right, you guys, you want to see? We want to see mine. No. Okay, David, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> you can just uh, leave, Chris. Is <laughs> yeah, we'll later. Bye. Oh man. So I had got the Monster Hunter board game. I got all the different things. Oh, as I break it. And so I got the Nergagante is my favorite little model kit so far out of these guys. And he is insane. And it's cool because they're so detailed. And this is what I just started doing. Like I did the model kits and would make these like statues. So it's cool to see like how far it's come, especially because this is mold injection. But like the 3D printing behind it because this was all done digitally. But I love how cool this thing is. It's so aggressive. Pretty neat. And it has teeth and horns and it's a carnivore. So. That's, yeah. yeah, well, you, you can get away with that on dragons. That's why dragons are cool. Dragons <laughs> are so cool. Oh my gosh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's pretty neat. I like it. But um, I think it beat me up so many times the first time in Monster Hunter. <laughs> Dude, the rune Nargagante destroyed me. I was not ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ross, you're next, dude. All right. Um, I got. I only got so much. one thing this month, uh, which my wallet oh, appreciates. But I think no, actually, it's just because I've been so buried in work. I got a, <laughs> I got this electro figure. Um, That's so cool from a third party company. But Amazing Spider-Man Two, a lot of people hate it. It's actually my favorite Spider-Man movie, and I love this depiction of electro. Interesting. Um, and then it has an alternate head that you uh, can light up with oh, a magnet. Lights up. 
That's cool. Yeah. Nice. So uh, and it can be like lightning effects and stuff. I'm I'm just building out my uh, Spider-Man villain dis movie villain display. So, I can hear uh, his theme song blaring just looking at him. Like yeah, <laughs> that whole sequence that, is great. The, the yeah. score for that movie is pretty incredible. Um, yeah, I, I actually have the score for that movie. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, it's. It, I, I think it's a pretty decent movie. I I think I I like it better than the one before it. Which yeah, like, definitely. Which most people <laughs> seem to like better. I think um, I agree with that. And I I think it's a shame that we never got that Rhino design as an action figure. I know. Yeah. Hot Toys of all companies to do it, Hot Toys had one. A prototype. Yeah, they had the prototype. Yeah, I so, saw. Yeah, it, but, that, it's probably a good move on that part not to put it out because if that if that failed, that would have been a huge loss. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing was humongous. That looks I, I, so I desperately cool. want a, a one twelfth scale figure of it, and it's one of those things that's on my never ending list of projects that I'd like to just do for fun for myself. But yeah, in, in all you know likelihood i'll never get to it <laughs> mm -hmm. well you can dream I, i'm yeah. sure there's probably, there's probably a 3d file online you could print out at this point oh i guarantee wow. there is but yeah that that design to me is really cool see i never cared for the real rhino design from the spider-man universe and i even sculpted a figure of rhino when i was at, at hasbro and um i mean i I, th I thought it turned out fine but when I saw this design, I was like, that's really cool because it's kind of like a Zoid. And, yeah. And it's, but, but it's like more hodgepodge kind of like Iron Man Mark One, you know? And, mm -hmm. and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I, I, I have no connection to the character, so I don't care if they change them. But I think just on its own, it's a cool looking thing. And it's a shame that we never got any type of figure from this. Mm -hmm. Well, like his head um, and his neck are so neat looking. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, this one it's, and the um, the Rhino from the Spider-Man PlayStation games; those designs are both really cool. They both go for different things, but I think for more of like the man in a suit design, mm -hmm. this video game has some really cool textural yeah. elements. I haven't seen it. the one from the game. I, I'm only familiar with this one. Yeah, neither have I. I'm interested to see what he looks like in the yeah. new Craven movie that's supposed to come out this year. Uh, they should, are they really doing that? Is that coming yeah. still? Yeah. Yeah, there he is from the game. Oh, that's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, see that that kind of thing like like it's it's more like an Iron Man suit at that point. And like in the comics and in the cartoons and stuff, he was like kind of wearing a Halloween costume. Is <laughs> what it looked like. And I couldn't take it seriously, but when it's like all teched out and it looks like there's like a power source or whatever, like it actually is more intimidating, like he's more of a machine. I think yeah. that's, it's a cooler thing. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool design. I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they also, um, this game also had my favorite design for the lizard. Um, they did a really cool, like, Godzilla looking thing. For oh, him. yeah. Yeah. He looked sweet. Yeah, the, li the lizard's kind of hit and miss for me. Sometimes I really like the, the designs, and sometimes, like, like, the, like the Amazing Spider Man design, I didn't care for it. It's just, I you don't know, like the, the, so the Amazing Spider Man design, I never liked. And I was always against, but within the last few months or so, I've kind of grown to really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there's See, Venom. I hate that Venom. Get that out of here, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that uh, Venom's awesome, though. God. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. It's so funny. Hey, look how cool he is, how though. Big he is. No, he's, he's not big enough. His not eyes big enough. wrong. His jaw's wrong. His size is how wrong. Much? Bigger tongue and bigger muscles. <laughs> no. Oh, he looks cool. Look how gross that looks. <laughs> teeth. Okay, well, okay. One, one thing we have to agree on, though, is it's better than the movie version from Sony. Uh, I, from I, so, I don't know about characterization, but just on design, I'd say they're pretty equal. Uh, okay, fair. In <laughs> my, I, I like the classic Venom. He shouldn't be that tall. He should be like 6'3", six, 6'5". Six, you five. like the, uh, the the old McFarlane style Venom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah really reserved. It, it's um, cool. I actually like most versions of Venom. I usually don't really have a preference personally. Um, he's usually cool no matter what. Yeah. But they're they're all pretty good. I remember when, when I was a kid, I, my first experience was the McFarlane Venom. And I thought he was the coolest character I'd ever seen when I saw him. Yeah. And I, I was drawing him. 
and not long after that i think i got into like spawn and things like that so you dave you have a little like four or five inch figure of venom on your desk there mm -hmm. that's like the perfect depiction of venom oh yeah you really like that have, have you not tracked that down yet no i haven't um, i want to see this yeah like that 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 is what venom should look like in my in my mind this, is one, this one is this one you tried to steal in your sleep <laughs> i tried to steal a bunch of stuff in my sleep <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it is. Is. yeah it's it's pretty cool it's not it doesn't have a lot of articulation i, I think it came out i want to say like oh nine something like that uh, 2008, 2009. Man, I hate to disappoint you, Ross, but I think I like the bustly venom more. <laughs> we all do. Ross is weird. He's just jealous of his muscles. This, this, this is a little bit too, like, I, I like a little bit of veiny texture. I like a little bit of gooeyness. Um, and I like him to be bulky, just not giant. Like, uh, it's so I, funny. I, just, I, I, I don't like when he doesn't have lips, you know, and I don't like it when his teeth are jagged because it takes away the sinister aspect of Venom. It just turns him into a creature instead of like a sinister, you know, villainous person. You know, it's just like, I don't like that one. Yeah. Like that, that's perfect. Like that, that Fun. looks like someone who like, this looks like ghost face. It looks, like, it looks a little goofy. It's like <laughs> someone who's cynical and scheming, but can also be a monster versus just a creature you know Listen, i think the coolest one that i see in here oh definitely this one what oh oh well, because of the wings uh, <laughs> like the wings see <laughs> this is wings. he does yeah. that in the second game and it's, it's so cool <laughs> this is another one of those reasons everyone just keeps stacking things on venom okay yeah, make his tongue bigger his teeth there. bigger make him taller buffer let's add wings to him longer At tongue point, is it no longer venom you know <laughs> I don't much. know. This guy's pretty cool. We'll make a whole video about Venom. <laughs> yeah. And Ross is over there. See, we, we, no, I don't like his muscles. They're bigger than mine. We need to get the Marvel <laughs> license for Creative Beast just so Ross can have his redemption arc with Venom and make it. <laughs> I, I would make the most muscular Venom just. For <laughs> yeah. Make, make it one eighteen scale him, and bigger than the T Rex. Have all like. the teeth and all the tongue and all oh. the slobber and the big uh. claws. And See, oh, see, that's, that's the worst one I've seen. Look at that stupid face. Like, it, it's not even yeah, okay. happening anymore. <laughs> yeah. Good. I can do this all day, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> totally good. Well, until so, your computer crashes with the layer of images you put in. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, speaking of which, we still got to do Dave's, Dave's, what is it called? Articulation? Acquisition? Acquis New acquisition. Dave, yeah. How articulated well, I, are you? I sense. Just get out of here, Chris. Now. <laughs> I, I sent Chris several acquisitions, but he's like, we, sh we should only show one. Yeah. <laughs> because I cheated, Chris you could afraid show I might have something cooler than him. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to do all of yours. I can, you know what's funny, Dave, is I actually kept all yours just in case that scenario happens, so we can go through all of these. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you lied to us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we're going to do these guys first, and we'll go to the other ones. Because okay. I think these things are so fun. Yeah. Um, I was Seriously. at a toy show recently. And there was a vendor there that was selling old garbage pill kids. And I, I have, th this is, this is my old uh, collection of garbage pill kids. I have them all in a binder and it's one of the two things that survived my childhood with my garbage pill kids and my animal encyclopedia and everything else is gone, but I, I still have my garbage pill kids and I haven't added to this collection in a long time. The last time I added to this collection was back when I was at McFarland Toys and Matt Holt, our painter, Matt Holt, told me he had a collection of Garbage Pill Kids and we brought our Garbage Pill Kids to work at McFarland Toys and traded all of our doubles. And like, it was just like being at school, right? And um, that was the last time I added to this collection. So uh, I was at the toy show this past weekend and I picked up a bunch more and so and, and just these are some of the new ones that i got so now I'm, I'm kind of interested in picking up more and trying to get closer to completing the collection i'm still pretty far away from completing it but there are a lot that of godzilla fun. ones fun what's that what that, oh, that godzilla oh, ones yeah 
Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of really cool ones. Um, and a lot of them I didn't even know about when I was a kid. So now I'm like, like finding the new old ones, which is a lot of fun. Dude, and then we have, oh, uh -oh. Ooh, got a little like, finger happy. Look at these guys. <laughs> these guys. Okay, this is a cool story about these ones. You told me earlier. I don't know if you want to tell the whole story, but I thought these were really neat. I was looking at these after you told me about them. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty quick story. Uh, so so this, these two are also at the toy show that I went to. They had, a, for some reason, had a bunch of vintage Rambo figures. And um, th this is from the Rambo toy line that was based on the cartoon from the 80s. And when I was a kid, I found the white ninja outside by the curb. It, just somebody threw their toy out. And it, I thought it was one of the coolest figures that I had. It was a cool white ninja. And back in the 80s, almost every action figure line had to have a black and a white ninja. Mm -hmm. And r r the Rambo line was no different. And um, I never could find the black ninja. But I had the white ninja and I had two Rambo figures. So, um, so that was like one of my favorite things that I had when I was a kid. And this toy show for the first time, I, I, I saw the, there's this one guy who was selling both ninjas. And the white ninja had all these accessories in the backpack and everything. I was like, I didn't know he had, I didn't know he had any, any accessories. So, so I had, I had to pick up both of them. He gave me a pretty good deal. And so that was something cool that I got recently. And um, now I'm somewhat interested in picking up more Rambo figures, even though they're kind of silly. So, so that's Did you see story. a huh? cool story. Uh, uh, I, I know it's not retro, but Haya Toys is now doing uh some rainbow figures like one twelfth cloth like soft goods um, oh, really? rainbow -like figures and you know, they look really good and you know, i think the amazing is, just reviewed it I, I i love stallone and and I, I i i loved the ramble toys as a kid i even loved the cartoon but i never got into the movies <laughs> 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 and you know like i i remember going to the theater and seeing um Rambo 2, which was a big deal. And I was always more of a Rocky fan. So I just never really got into Rambo very much. I've never even seen the third Rambo movie. Um, but for some reason, I would show up for the cartoon. I'd watch the cartoon and I, I wanted to get the toys and all this. And I don't know, for some reason, for me, it worked better hmm. as a cartoon. But um, that's just me. So you've seen First Blood, though, right? Yeah, it's a really good movie, but it's like it's super serious. And you know, my, my action experience is a little more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so I, I think that's why I gravitate more towards like Rocky three and Rocky four and stuff like that. You know, but, dude, Rocky three, Rocky four and Creed two. That's the trifecta right there, man. Those oh are, my gosh. That's re, that's required viewing right there. <laughs> I'm on a robot. All the Rocky movies. Not me, all, not all seeing any of movies. those. They're, they're all good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 I like all the Rocky movies to some degree. It's just that those are my three favorites. Well, see, that's that's the th I didn't realize how cool they were. And I started watching these with Dave and Ross, and then I watched them on my own. And I, it's weird. It's like they're older movies, but after watching Rocky Four and seeing the cameo, I guess it is, where they go back in time and he's thinking about everything that's happened to him as he's driving. I was like, Man. this makes sense now. <laughs> that's such an awesome scene. That song is awesome. Oh, Dude, yeah. all the music's good. It's on my playlist now for the gym. That's Hell. good. That's good. Maybe now you'll you'll start upping your game in the gym. I'm going to be buff. <laughs> yeah, you'll stop using those plastic weights, those fake weights. <laughs> the plastic you don't know me. <laughs> Listen, just because they're foam doesn't mean they're not heavy. <laughs> I use a shake weight, guys. That's how I got like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Teach me your ways, Chris. <laughs> Teach me. All right, we got these ones too. This three-headed guy's cool. Well, yeah, that's – okay, so so that's my – the many faces I got recently. I actually have them right here in front of me because he's one of my favorites now. And um, uh, he has, I'm sure, I'm sure some people have probably seen this before, but he's got the little face spin gimmick. That's cool. But this is, th this one's particularly cool because it's based on his mini comic appearance. And I think it's the first time they've actually based a figure on the mini comic appearance. Um, uh, some of the people that follow me for a while, they might know about uh, the Bring Your Manny Faces to Work Day that we used to do at NECA. And that was like, kind of a fun little holiday that we invented at NECA and uh we all used to bring our many faces figures to work so 
I'm still kind of picking up the Manny Faces figures when, when they come out just for fun. But this is one of the better ones that I've seen. Yeah, this is like a newer like figure based on the retro stuff. Yeah, it, it's part of the Origins line. So so like the origin, the whole concept between Masters Universe Origins is that they take the original sculpts and they kind of re-sculpt them with articulation and um, put them out, you know, at the same scale. And uh, in addition to doing the original characters, they're also doing like new takes on the old characters like this one. So so it's it's been fun to collect that line. I think it's a pretty cool line and they have a bunch of more stuff coming. So is this something that D George is doing? Uh, no, no, this is all done in house at, at Mattel, as far as I know. Oh, uh, okay. I saw on his Instagram, he was doing some really cool, uh, He Man stuff. I was like, Oh, oh yeah, man. yeah, that that was for the, the Master Universe Classics line, which I think is by far the best of all of the Master of the Universe figures that come out. And he, he worked on that line pretty heavily, but those, those came out, oh, uh, like. 10 or 15 years ago so like it's like a lot of those have, like skyrocketed in value because they're so collectible they're so cool <laughs> did um, did you get the cosmic legion oh i, I did I, it's i have it and it's in my my kitchen <laughs> yeah i have it yeah yeah chris ha chris has it too chris you might remember that that two pack we got at, at power con with with the, with the green dragon guy yeah there he is yeah i put a on mine <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah i was like i i i realized who it was after a minute i liked his little makeup thing and i was like you know what it needs a dead skull in the space mask because yeah. he has many faces yeah yeah well there, there is an option for like a skeletor face at one point so that's yeah. cool yeah did and they ever have a version of this character where instead of twisting it it was a button and spring loaded where it would like click and turn or something or has it always been like a manual, like? It's it's usually a dial on top of the head. There was one cartoon version that had like a little disc on the back of the neck, uh, but it was never like spring loaded or anything. Uh, and gotcha. then I, I think I'm, I think of the character from Toy Story three, the little clay monster that has the rolling face or whatever. Oh, <laughs> see, see, they did have that technology with the. With, with the battle armor he-man and skeletor where they had like the 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 little chest armor would flip around automatically mm -hmm. and then you have to reset it and so so that that gimmick did exist it just that it was just for a different type of figure see there used to be so this is a conversation dave and I always have because the 90s were better than the 80s and dave's a little jealous about that i think mean, no, he's always getting that mixed up <laughs> Your toys aren't as cool as my toys. Uh, we just I went miss, over the I lunch box. Both of those, so I'll just sit with my popcorn and watch. You know? <laughs> so, now, now, Chris and I just went over this whole thing in the form of lunch boxes because we were talking about how cool the '80s lunch boxes were and how he had these like these sad sacks of <laughs> like I don't, I don't even know what you had like like uh, fabric sacks or something so like, gross they get all hey, soggy I, <laughs> hey i had the coolest lunch box in kindergarten the early 2000s i had the mystery machine from scooby doo and the door would actually open up on the back and you could put oh, sandwiches in it that's pretty cool pretty, yeah it's pretty wow. cool <laughs> no one had the crappy sack lunches wow, where it's so, like a so, so chris so chris had the worst experience man and did, did yeah. you talk about something <laughs> Listen, every time i talk to dave i have to reminisce about the things i didn't have no. <laughs> I was my so lunch box as a kid it. looked like i was going to work you know at a cubicle or something it was just like a, <laughs> an adult lunch box is that what you had <laughs> yeah it was just like a, a fabric insulated lunch box like in the oh, yeah box. i picture oh. you ross i picture you going to school with like a, a tie a nice shirt and a briefcase <laughs> I also imagine inside the lunchbox, everything is in its particular compartment. Yeah. Like, nothing is touching anything. Aren't really organized. Yeah, oh. yeah. Hey, Nutty's yeah. asking for a BOTM lunchboxes in chat. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah with the art pieces. And cool. it could be a figure. It could be the the the, cake, the box that the figure comes in, like a. The, the lunch and box. It's, and, so it's like a double. So you get a lunch box and you also get, you get like a figure. figure. That'd be cool. How did I do like an exclusive, just like repaint inside the lunch box? Bottle in there too, I'm assuming. Yeah. 
Oh, oh that Chris totally crazy. missed out on the thermos bottles, I bet. Listen, mm. I didn't miss out. Mine were just boring. I had literally a thermos with a cup lid that you used as a cup, and it was horrible. And I'd forget to wash it out, so it'd be slimy and greasy from the stuff. Okay, that, that, that's a <laughs> problem at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude, lunch boxes, you guys. Okay. Hey, we should seriously look at this. Put it, put it on the list. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be we got books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did we tell her art? Um, have you thought of doing like poster prints of the art pieces for the the packaging? Because I think I would love to frame some of those and have them. On you know, I'm, I'm I'm looking into finding a way to like have an on an, a print on demand uh, store, so Ooh. that you can like you know like have stuff printed on mugs or like posters or shirts and stuff like that. Like it's 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 a little too much for me to have on hand. And then mm -hmm. like to ship out and all that stuff. But if, if there's like a print on demand situation, that's ideal because then people can get the products that they want, but I don't have to store it and ship it out. So so you that's way more variety with that. Yeah, too. yeah. We have a lot of variety and um like I mean there's there's a lot of services that do that now. So that's one of the things I'm gonna be looking at this year. I think I've talked to Chris about it already, and uh like we're gonna see what we can do. So, cause I, I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. See that, like this comment here. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. See, oh, I think that, yeah, sorry. I had knocks you guys. Sorry. My son came in here and he was running around going to spend night at his aunt's house. So I had to give him a good night kiss. Sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he stole my dinosaurs. So, I'm gonna go beat him up oh. right <laughs> but no, like, uh, sorry. What were we talking about? Oh, we're, we're talking, I, I, was, I was telling about the print on demand. I, I, I think you yes. talked about this, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, like we want to, find a way to, to do print on demand merchandise for Beast and Mesozoic yeah. and Cyberzoic. And um, yeah, so that hopefully we can get that going by the end of the year. I, you know, I, we I, should I haven't put a lot of time into that. I have to admit, it's just a thought right now. So Listen, I will just raise your hand. I, I'm right here. <laughs> you will. Teacher David, teacher. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on that, and I'm gonna try to have some stuff set up for this. This because uh, we're gonna be here at Comic Palooza, July May twenty something. Oh yeah. 18th. So yeah, so it's the day. I'll tell you guys the day in a second. Twenty something. Yep. Something. It's like that. So Rob and I will be there. Starter update. I mentioned it. Oh, what happened? I, I mentioned the the Comic Palooza. Oh, at, yeah. Yeah. In, in in the last Kickstarter update that I did, yeah, it was it was um, pretty recently. Palooza. Yeah, it was I remember seeing it. So it'll be in Houston. Mm -hmm. When is it in 2024? May 24th through the 26th, you guys. There and you so go. know what I'll do is I'll actually see if we can get some shirts and stuff uh so that people who show up to and want a shirt. Because dude, there's so much cool art from Cyberzoic already. And be some up. I think if we do like a crazy cool like the Allosaurus with Argentius's helmet, just the helmet of the Allosaurus and then Argentius's. Argentosaurus? Mm. How do you say Argentius? Is that plural? Argentius? Is there's plural? there's only one Argentius. Argentius is hel Arg oh my god, helmet. His helmet. It's getting late. Um, Argentius I. You know, <laughs> you know how cool that'd be just to have like a black shirt with his silver helmet, like kind of like in that weird like graphic like uh comic style. I think that'd be so sick. I'm, I'm gonna leave this up to you because yeah. you're Got yeah, it. You're, 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 you're coming up with this, so we'll, we'll see what you come up with. <laughs> I don't know if David agreed with I can me. help, too. Agreed. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, no, Spino, dude. I, I'm fine with it. I mean, it, it sounds cool. I, I like merchandise. I, I think that's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you guys, we got a lot of cool stuff. We got a chess board. We got mullage boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're coming up with all, all, all the things. We're opening a retail store next week. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. 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 Oh, I I will say I, I comment Palooza. I noticed that uh, the guy who played Napoleon Dynamite and the guy who played Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite are both going to be there. I need you to get a picture with them for me. Deal. <laughs> okay. Me with them, right? <laughs> What's that? Me with them, right? Yeah, you need to be in the picture with. Them. Okay, cool. I'm gonna have them sit on my shoulders. I'm gonna be flexing. Okay. Yeah. I wanna <laughs> see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are they really gonna be there now? I gotta look at this. I haven't even looked at the guest yeah, list. Yeah, they're they're like the main uh guest people. Yeah. Nice. All right, Ross. Yeah. 
I'm gonna leave you alone for three hours while I sit in line to get those pictures. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. <laughs> oh, Dave, no, he might not come back to uh, Florida, so I hope Steph sees this because you're gonna disappear in Texas, Ross. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, we need him for for Cyberzoic too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, I want you to know, Ross, if David wasn't protected, you'd be dead. No. No, he, I will say he, his hands are off limits. <laughs> I don't know about that. I told Ross that. I go, he said, I can't hurt your brain. I can't hurt your hands. Yeah. But the rest of you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I got to make it to one of these conventions this year. Dude. Um, they're they're awesome. They look like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Dude, it's I'm, so fun. I'm looking forward to... Uh, to uh, what was it Joe Fest? We're doing Joe Fest together. You know, it was funny. I, you've been doing it wrong right? every time up until now that I almost corrected you and said Joe Con, but that's what <laughs> you would normally say, and it's actually Joe Fest. Well, I'm, <laughs> I, my brain is still adjusting to not doing Power Con and doing Joe Fest. So my brain is like somewhere in between half the time where it's like, we're doing Joe Con. Oh no, wait, it's Joe Fest. And yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Bionicosaurus says BOTM toilet paper wipe like a dinosaur. <laughs> no, if you're a T-Rex, that'd be horrible. That would be horrible. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, but Joe Fest way. is in Georgia, right? What's yes. that? Joe Fest is Georgia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Indigo 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 Indigo. Georgia, yeah. Forgot yeah. we were presenting that face guy. Which one? Uh, many faces. Oh yeah, yeah. We got. Oh, we never, we never talked about the. Uh, oh the yeah. House the elephant guy. Yeah. I mean, there's not a big story behind that. It's just something I bought recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's another He-Man character that was that was available online for like a few hours. So. That's cool. Yeah, he's really cool though. He's 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 based on a vintage character that I used to like when I was a kid. Um, still like. It's not. He stuff. is cool. I think. Did George did this for that line we we're talking about too? Did this guy? Did he work on Snap Spout? I don't. I think I don't he did. For sure. I mean, he worked on so many. Um, it's possible George worked on it. If yeah. he did, I'd like to see that because I think it would be a really cool. Yeah, one. I'll pull I mean, that they, style. They 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 did like the main version, and then they did like a like an alternate head at some point that was more modernized. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up his thing. Dinosaur toilet seat with teeth. And with how often I use the bathroom, I don't think I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't like that that comment's highlighted. That doesn't sound very comfortable. <laughs> I don't like that it's covering my face too, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot I clicked on that. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Get, here we go. Here's the George. Man, this guy is so talented. I know. He was just here. We were just hanging out this past week. I know. He told me. I was like, hey, next time you see Dave, give him something you've given him before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it wasn't the the I was I think it's this guy. Let me see. Yeah, he's he's got he's got so many cool pictures of his work. Man, he is it's crazy to think he does this in clay too. I mean, you do stuff in clay as well, but it's like oh, it's yeah. his stuff is like super technical though. I mean, it's like super clean, like it's i don't know anybody that can do it that clean oh wow oh, oh yeah tuscador yeah Let's see, that's I'm crazy to find. i'm i swear he has it in here because he did the gargoyle line and i have all those yeah yeah he did a lot of the gargoyle stuff for NECA. and he did the um you tyrannus or the dryptosaurus armor the dryptosaurus yeah he, he did the dryptosaurus armor yeah yeah, yeah which was cool because when he was over here the first time he got one. to see that painted up in person that's oh, nice. insane. Yeah. What do you think? I he, he loved it. I mean, he he was he he likes all of them, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that was cool that he he was involved with that. Dude, he is that is that guy is nuts. He's such a dude. He is a real life character, like in a way he's he's larger than life when he presents himself. We got to meet Ross and I met him with Dave uh, and uh, Garrett when we were in uh, was at Manhattan, New York. Yeah, cool dude. Yeah, that was really cool. I'm glad that worked out. I'm so happy that worked out. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, if if you could, if there was a cartoon character that all day sculpted and invented toys, he would be the design of that character. <laughs> he just visually has that whole like, I mean, just very much a character. Oh, I got I found a picture on here. I'll, I'll put it in the chat so you got or the chat the thing so you guys can see it because he is 
And he's he's like what? Do you think he's like six foot four, six foot five? Um, I don't know, probably around six feet, maybe. Really, dude, he seems so big. Sure. All right, here we go. I got a picture of him. He's the guy holding the sword. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. So, oh, yeah, wow. he, so, so yeah, that, that's George on the left. Oh. Oh. What am I doing here? There he is. <laughs> yeah, he fixed it. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. And 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 the, the guy that he has a picture with is is the guy that was in the uh, Masters Universe live action movie back in uh, like 87 i think it came out and that that's the guy that played blade and he, he had the swords that's cool yeah that's cool. dude it's crazy yeah dude he, he george is cool he's he's one of my favorite characters <laughs> <laughs> crazy oh yeah maybe yeah, that's nice hold on i completely abused the chat just now and left you guys alone so let me okay, see if there's any yeah, comments so in here you want to <laughs> answer some more questions oh yeah oh here it is oh here's a good one Oh, serious. Uh oh. Hey, nice profile picture, Bo Simon. I'm a Kiriko main as well. <laughs> Who is that? Kiriko from Overwatch. Oh. <laughs> oh, I never played that one. It just got an update. We were talking about it earlier. Oh, oh side note, real quick. Uh -huh. Over the weekend, um, Manny was over here and he brought some games over. I don't know if he's watching, oh. but I got to play the new Tekken 8. And I got to play the new RoboCop Rogue City, which everyone, by the way, Chris has not seen RoboCop. Don't don't hate him for that. I haven't either. Could <laughs> <laughs> be buddies in this. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I think we just we just evolved. Yeah, there, <laughs> we raised up. <laughs> Listen, but. I have rented it. I just need to watch it. How are you guys not it seen it? Have it's really awesome rented it. It. Wait, what? Everybody just talked, huh? It doesn't count if you only rent it. You have to watch it. Listen, I'm halfway there. I've rented it. Now I'm just going to watch it. Like it's a hard part getting a hold of it, right? Can you imagine someone asking you, have you seen RoboCop? And you're like, uh, I rented it. I rented it. it. <laughs> so I, I, asked, I asked Chris if he'd seen RoboCop. And he's like, that's the movie where the guy gets blown up in a car, right? <laughs> I, I mean... Was I wrong? <laughs> that could either be Robocop or all the, of the Transformers movies. He's talking, about, <laughs> well, he's, he's talking about the remake of Robocop that came out a few years ago. And, uh, you know, that's I never not, saw that one. It's, it's not the same quality. No. But you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, well, you know what I should have done is I should have started pretending like I saw it and started giving you little scenes from Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I would have enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. He's got the thing in his chest. It powers his suit. Yeah. Yeah, he fights the big robot at the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so oh. I get, okay, so I answered the question. Oh, um, oh we're not there yet. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, I, now I might be pronouncing this wrong. Nanukasaurus? Nanukasaurus, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's happening. Yeah. Um, uh, that's the only other one as far as Tyrannosaurus go that. I mean that in the Ali Ramus, what I mentioned earlier. Um, I hope it's super fluffy. <laughs> I, can't, like, I can't even think of how many other ones there are outside of what's the big, like the real big one that's like T Rex, but it starts with a Z. Spinosaurus. Zuchang Tyrannus. Zu, Zu, I'm not even trying to say that. Yes, that one. <laughs> uh, Do you spell that? It's, oh my goodness. How do Zuchang Tyrannus, a Z H U C H E N Y. Oh, I found it. Yep. E -N -Y. Oh, so this I, is a cool picture too. I would like to work that in at some point. It's like uh, the devil ho. Ideally, I would like to share a body with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I don't know if that's too big for that species. Whoa. It might be a little big. I um here's a kind of an extension of that. Um Chris. are you considering doing like a full grown Tarbosaurus that's more in line with the the T Rex? Yeah, you know, I I just thought of that. Like, I mean that that's possible. Like maybe those two could share a body, maybe. Um, yeah, but but see now the issue happens in that case. Okay, so so do we continue doing tyrannosaurs or do we do uh, like hadrosaurs or do we do ankylosaurs? You know, like, ankylosaurs because like that that's always kind of the debate. Like we could go more in this direction or do we start filling in the gaps that haven't even been served yet? And like like that's like to me it's more interesting to put out something that's completely different instead of something that's similar 
uh, as much as I would like to do all of it, um, like that is a like a big body. That's a big expense that we could like do an ankylosaurus or something like that instead, or or a parasaurophilus. And you know, to me, I think that would make the line more uh, diverse as compared yeah. to something that like 90% of the people are going to confuse with a T-Rex. Yeah. So, um, like all of it's possible, but it's more appealing for me to do something that's completely different than something that's a tiny bit different. I think yeah. these are really, um, are really cool to like fill in as new stuff is coming out just to like get kind of like a, a new color scheme and to just like have that new species represented in some capacity. Cause you have so many obscure ones. It's, yeah really cool. no i mean it's yeah i mean it's it's kind of a, overwhelming all of the possibilities really like when you really get into each family i mean there's like maybe two or three from each family that a lot of fans have heard of but then like there's a bunch of obscure ones too and they're all cool they could all make for great figures um but now that we're kind of going in this direction of cyberzoic and exploring this world of diverse creatures I'm becoming more interested in diversifying both lines more now with BLTM and Cyberzoic. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to prioritize those opportunities right mm -hmm. now, but it's not like we can't circle back and you know, fill out mm. you know, stuff like this more later on. Um, yeah. But it, it's fun to think about though. I mean, I, it's, you know, it, it could all lead to really cool stuff. So For sure. I am. Um... I would love to see you go into hadrosaurs and I feel like those could have some good uh, part sharing too with the bodies. Cause a lot of them just have the really unique head crest shapes and just yeah. really cool color schemes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, I have looked into that just trying to get an idea. Um, and, and I actually have like these, these uh, Photoshop documents that I've created like with all kinds of, uh, skeletals in scale with each other. And I, I have it for the albiosaurs. I have it for the stegosaurs. I have it for the car carcodontids. Um, and I just, I just kind of build those over time and start matching up the skeletons in scale, try to figure out like what could potentially share parts. And uh, eventually it leads to making a figure, but it, it it's a very long process. Um, yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, it's, but, it, but it, it's fun. It's fun to, to look at all that and try to imagine the possibilities and what it would look like. And it's really just a matter of figuring out the priority of the order and, you know, try to do like a certain amount of part sharing, but also a certain amount of diversity at the same time. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, how many dragons are planned for Cyberzoic so far? So, so we have the two that have already been funded. Uh, there was supposed to be a third one, and that's the one that I'm gonna be sculpting next. That's the Bristol Dragon, which was seen in an illustration with Hel Helena in the Gladiator Arena. Um, I'm sort of telling Chris. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how easy it is to find it. It's on my Instagram, but it came up a long time ago. But anyway. Let's see if we can find it, yeah. Um, so, so there are three for sure. Um, and then there's the, uh, the, the retool of, of, uh, the Arctic. Oh yeah. The, the, uh, Antarctic dragon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who came long, um, the, the fire dragon. Yeah. That is definitely happening. Um, there's another dragon that I've been working on. I don't think I've shown it to anybody, but how, do, how could you keep this from us? I may have shown it to you, Ross. I'm not sure. Wow, how could you keep this from me? What? <laughs> the dragon. Yeah, so so this is the dragon I'm going to be sculpting next. And cool. it's based originally off of a, a small little thumbnail that Rafe did. I mean, he did a while back. Rafe uh, Lomitan did, did a bunch of uh, little thumbnail dragons for the Fire Clan. And this is like, this was one of the ones that really stood out to me as being cool. So. I worked it into the story. Um, you actually do see it in the first comic book issue um, with Helena and another gladiator named Cycron. I'll get to that later. Um, but this, yeah, this is going to be one of the the 
the notable dragons in the story. So that's the one I'm going to be sculpting next. And um, for Cyberzoic 2, there's going to be two, at least two more dragons, maybe three. And um, there's a possibility of like working in some smaller species, like um, just so we have more types of dragons because they can't all be huge. I mean, that's not mm -hmm. a great idea. Uh, there's a possibility that we'll make that uh, that ice dragon that's in the U Tyrannus artwork with the the in the back. yeah, like that one. That could be a cool one. Um, I don't think I noticed that one in the art. Oh, yes, really? I'm gonna yeah. pull it up if I can find it. Yeah. Yeah, Might we, have been one of my like Instagram scrolling just blind moments. I'm like, that's a cool U Tyrannus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it might be a second read because it's sort of in the background, but mm -hmm. it was something that Raul and I were going back and forth on, like trying to get a cool look to it. There's got to be it in here. Oh, I think it might. No, it's way back there. Holy crud! Yeah, I don't remember. I think I I probably showed it maybe a month or two after the Kickstarter. So maybe, maybe January. Yeah, I think so. I could be wrong. Time's going by so fast. I can't believe it's almost a April already. It's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of scary, man. I was thinking about that today. I was like, this is insane how far along we are. Yeah. Jeez. It feels like we were just in the middle of the Kickstarter, you know? <laughs> yeah, it does kind of feel like that. And now every morning I wake up being happy that I don't have to look at the number. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so every time i do one of those i just obsess over it and it just yeah it's it takes a lot we we were obsessing over it every every night you know instead of watching tv oh, you know, yeah. chilling out on the couch steph and i would be sitting there just like refreshing looking at the oh. comments looking at the number go up and down and fluctuate as people changed oh we were getting, yeah we go crazy yeah yeah my my confidence <laughs> would depend on the number <laughs> if it makes you feel any better i was also stressed about i remember well not stressed but really engaged with uh, especially the ceratopsian one because the tyrannosaur and the the cyberzoic kickstarter like just kind of shot up right away but yeah the ceratopsians i remember going back every night after i got home from work and sitting down with my friends and we we're like did we unlock like the cosmo yet or something oh, we yeah. sit down and look at it <laughs> yeah 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 that was an that interesting was experience yeah and you know one of the things that i think a lot of people don't know about the ceratopsy and kickstarter was that even though it was the lowest funded I, I i might be wrong about this but i'm pretty sure it had the most funding on backer kit that's like, crazy of, of everything and um like it did really well after the kickstarter and um it, you just you just don't know how these things are going to work out i i was i was a bit disappointed to be honest about how, how it went because I had high hopes that the ceratopsians would outdo the raptor series because you obviously want to keep moving upward um but then it kind of blew up afterwards so that was really cool you just you just you know you just keep putting it out there and you know see what happens but yeah. oh chris you, you you can take down this question now <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> well, I, yeah. I was enjoying hiding there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? No. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys, we are an hour and 45 minutes in. I yeah. Think we're probably next, like, yeah. Yeah. Next so if you guys have any questions, shoot them out there. I was unable to find the picture of It's the U Tyrannus, right? With um, the dragon. Yeah. Yeah. The U Tyrannus. Uh, yeah. It, it has the armor and the snow. Yeah. I but can't find it. That's okay. Let's just take one more question and we'll, we'll, we'll call Wrap it up. Yeah. Nice. I have okay. a quick off topic comment, but oh, go my friend, it. my friend Kayla texted me and I and, and was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm live. And she's like, shout me out. So shout out to my friend Kayla for being a real one. Nice. Kayla, we don't even know you. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's a good one. I think this will be the last one for tonight. You guys I mean, more cyber. Oh yeah. I want to keep <laughs> it. Definitely want to keep it going uh, as long as possible. And, um, there's a lot of ideas. <laughs> I don't even know if we can fit it all into three parts. And, and uh, I mean, I even have some supplementary stuff planned to be added to the backer kit before Cyberzoic 2. 
So, um, you know, you could see some new stuff pop up on the back of kit. And um, is that the stuff that we've been working on? What? Um, oh, yes, some of that. Yeah. So I, I don't want to give it away yet, but um, <laughs> it's, it's not like huge stuff, but there's, you know, stuff that will make the world uh, a little more filled out. And uh, I think tomorrow for my social media, I'll be showing off one of the characters that didn't quite make it into the Kickstarter, but we will be getting um, before Cyberzoic too. So, um, so keep an eye out for that. And um, yeah, this is this is a thing that it's designed to be continuous um, past part three. Um, we could even go back to the origins of the humans landing on Gaia too, and how that whole thing got started so that progresses towards them developing this armor in the first place and like all their their conflicts with the dragons initially and how close they came to extinction and all I, like th that's a whole nother section of the story that we're not even touching on yet so um so yeah i i see this i mean as long as there's an audience for it i see it continuing uh indefinitely and i i also have ideas for other stories later too so we'll see what happens so I think that's the most exciting part about it. And there's so much room for growth because it's an unexplored planet that has all these alien lives. Well, I guess it's not fully unexplored, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's we have, we, yeah, we're, we're exploring it right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't found the cave of Chris's yet. Hey, listen, you know what? There's a cave, and I can't tell you about it, Ross, but it's really cool and secret. Dave knows all about it, but we can't tell you about it yet. <laughs> you see, you say a cave of crystals? Of Chris's. Chris's. Oh, Chris! Oh, what is the plural of Chris? Chris's side, Chris and I. I think they all destroyed each other, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll see myself out of here. No, <laughs> no. Well, I'm gonna say we got. We did this for an hour and forty-seven minutes, you guys. That's crazy. It didn't we feel like it. No, <laughs> it's, it never does. This is yeah. Yeah, it's always a fun hangout, and we love having you guys here chat. And thank you for being here and being a part part of this conversation. We're really excited for things to come. A lot of cool stuff. We showed off the baby ceratops hands. Almost said triceratops hands because the baby triceratops. But <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me, Ron. Um, but yeah, and we so we showed those off some new stuff. Ross, not Ross, Dave's favorite dinosaur. How do you say this guy? Acrocanthosaurus. Oh, Acrocanthosaurus. That's the one. So yeah, yeah, and if you guys haven't seen it, go ahead and go back to the, the video. You can watch all the cool stuff coming out. But yeah, thank you all again for watching. We really appreciate you all. Had a great time. And thanks for showing up with us, uh, Spinal Dude. <laughs> yes, thanks so thanks much for having me. Uh, this is super fun. Um, fun. And uh, hopefully I get to do it again sometime. <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't like mind. you that much. No. Um, <laughs> Bye guys. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> so we hope to leave. Oh, but yeah. But uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add to that? You good? Sweet. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm good. I think I said enough. <laughs> you, you didn't even talk this whole time, Dave. I got talked too much. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. I mean, well, hey, we, we we didn't address Spinosaurus, and I... <laughs> Oh, actually, yeah. Spinosaurus, Cyberzoic Three. That's that's all I have for that right now. There you go. <laughs> and like if you every live stream, stream right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, y'all have a good night. It was a pleasure as always. Thank you for the support. We love every one of you guys and appreciate all you do for this uh, cool IP. And we can't wait to get everything out for Cyberzoic. All right. Yeah. See y'all next time. Later, you guys. Later.